Hi everyone, I'm Sujini, Faculty in Physics at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, I'm going to start a series of lectures on semiconductor devices. Let us see the brief outline of this module, that is semiconductor devices. So, in semiconductor devices, we are going to discuss first about direct and indirect band gaps, then PN junction, the formation of PN junction and its working, the voltage current characteristics, the energy band diagram, then we are going to discuss about the biasing of a junction. Why do we need to bias and what are the different types of biasing we have? And then we'll discuss in detail about Zener diode, LED, photo detectors and pin and avalanche photodiode. At the end, we are also going to discuss about solar cell. So these are the lectures I'm going to take on semiconductor devices. So, in today's uh, uh, lecture, I'll be discussing about direct and indirect band gap and the brief outline of how we are going to discuss about this topic. First, we discuss about the classification of materials, the broad classification of materials. That is, whenever we take materials, we can classify them into basically three types, the conductors, The semiconductors and insulators. So, conductors are those materials which can easily conduct and insulators we say they are very bad conductors, they do not conduct. But our major focus now is on semiconductors. So, now when we take semiconductors, we also have a classification in semiconductors. We are going to discuss about it first. And then we will discuss about different phenomena. That is the generation and recombination of electron hole pairs in semiconductors. Then we will discuss about the EK diagrams. That is the energy versus K. K vector we call it or the momentum vector diagrams. And finally we are going to compare and contrast the direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconductors. Now coming to the classification of semiconductors. So semiconductors can be classified into intrinsic semiconductors and extrinsic semiconductors. Why we need to understand this is when I talk about direct band gap semiconductors, direct band gap semiconductors are extrinsic semiconductors and Indirect band gap semiconductors are intrinsic. So, unless we understand what are the main features of intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors, it becomes difficult to understand about this band gap. So, first I will brief you about this classification and the characteristics of these intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. So, intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors, means they are in the pure form. Whenever we take an intrinsic semiconductor, all the atoms in that semiconductor are of the same type. For example, I take germanium or silicon. These are two very important semiconducting materials. So, if I take a germanium crystal, all the atoms in that crystal are germanium. There are no other atoms present in that. Then we call it a pure semiconductor that is intrinsic semiconductor. Then comes the extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic means it is impure. So what do we understand by impure? Means we take a semiconducting material and we dope it with some other material means we take an, uh, a silicon or germanium and add an impurity to it. So, when we are adding an impurity, there are two types of impurities we add. The first one is a pentavalent impurity. So, what do we understand by pentavalent impurity? Pentavalent means any atom which has five valence electrons, means five electrons in its outermost orbit. Whenever we add such type of 
uh, impurity, we call it as n-type semiconductor. So n-type semiconductor is the one in which we dope it with a pentavalent impurity. The examples for pentavalent impurity are phosphorus, arsenic, antimony. And we call it as donor impurity. Why do we call it as donor impurity? Because it is always ready to donate one electron because it has five electrons uh, in the outermost orbit and it is always ready to donate one valence electron. Next comes the p-type. So whenever we are adding a trivalent impurity, trivalent, tri means three. So whenever we are adding an impurity which has three valence electrons, then we call it a p-type semiconductor. Now, the examples for trivalent impurity are gallium, boron, indium, aluminium and so on. And we call it as acceptor impurity. This is an acceptor impurity. We call it as Ne because it has three valence electrons and it is always ready to accept one electron because germanium or silicon, they belong to the fourth group. They have four valence electrons. And when we are adding a p-type uh, or a trivalent impurity, then it has three valence electrons. So altogether there are seven. And for octet configuration or stable configuration, we need eight electrons in the outermost orbit. So it is always ready to accept one electron and we call it as acceptor impurity. So we are denoted by Na. Now, uh, let us just quickly understand the main differences between intrinsic and extrinsic. We have seen that it is in a pure form. Extrinsic is impure by adding trivalent impurity or by adding pentavalent impurity. We are getting an extrinsic semiconductor. So, in an intrinsic semiconductor, holes and electrons are equal. We are going to discuss about this in the next few slides. And when we take an extrinsic semiconductor, there are the number of free holes are more in p-type and the number of free electrons are more in n-type. So whenever we have an n-type material, the number of electrons are more and we take a p-type material, the number of holes are more. And then Fermi level lies in between the valence band and the conduction band. Fermi level is a level which is denoting the highest occupied energy level in a given semiconductor. So whenever we are talking about intrinsic semiconductor, since the number of holes and electrons are equal, this Fermi level always lies in between the valence band and conduction band. But in case of a extrinsic semiconductor, the Fermi level varies. It lies near the valence band in P-type and it lies near the conduction band in n time. And also if you see the ratio of majority and minority carriers, what are majority and minority carriers? In case of intrinsic semiconductor, there is no majority and minority because the number of holes are equal to the number of electrons. So this ratio is always the number of electrons to the number of holes is always equal to 1 because the ratio is they are equal. The number of electrons is equal to the number of holes. But when it comes to extrinsic semiconductor, it is not unity. Why it is not unity? When we take Ne by NH for a p-type material, the number of holes are more. So Ne by NH is always less than 1 for p-type. Why? Because the number of holes are more in p-type. When we take for n-type, the number of electrons are more. So we have Ne by NH greater than 1. So this is n-type. Now, uh, coming to the electrical conductivity of uh, semiconductors. Whenever we are taking a pure silicon or germanium crystal, like we are talking about an intrinsic semiconductor. So since they belong to the fourth group, each atom will have four valence electrons. So they have four valence electrons and they form four covalent bonds with the neighboring atoms to attain the 
closed shell configuration means if I take a germanium crystal like this, it has four valence electrons and these electrons will always form covalent bonds with their neighboring atoms like this. There may be one more germanium here, one more germanium. These are the neighboring atoms. So, when they are forming covalent bonds like this, then they have the state, they get the stable configuration. So, at zero Kelvin, at this temperature, zero Kelvin temperature, there are no electrons in the conduction band because if you see here, all the electrons are forming covalent bonds and there are no electrons which are free. So, there are no electrons which are free means there are no conducting electrons means the conduction band is absolutely free or nil. There are nil electrons in the conduction band. So, the electrical conductivity of a pure semiconductor is zero. So, whenever we are taking an intrinsic semiconductor at zero Kelvin, its electrical conductivity is zero. Now, if you increase the temperature, what happens? Some of these covalent bonds may break. When these bonds break, the electrons become free and these electrons are responsible for conduction. They become free and they start conducting electricity. So, this is how uh, we have at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. We are talking about a silicon crystal. For example, we have taken 9 silicon atoms arranged in a regular fashion. And each silicon atom has 4 valence electrons surrounded by neighboring silicon atoms. So, all of them are forming bonds and there are no free electrons. This is at 0 Kelvin. How do we represent it in an energy band diagram? So, if I am keeping all the energy levels of the valence electrons put together, it forms a valence band. This is a valence band. Now, if you see, these are the electrons in different levels in the valence band. You can see the dotted ones are the electrons which are present in different energy levels of the valence band. And now when you see the conduction band, it is vacant. Why this conduction band is vacant? Because there are no free electrons or no conduction electrons. So, the conduction band is absolutely free or vacant. So, when there are no conduction electrons, it does not conduct. So, it behaves as an insulator. And then, as the covalent bonds are broken, electrons move into the conduction band, leaving behind holes in the valence band. So, whenever an electron moves from the valence band to the conduction band, there arises a hole in the valence band. So, this is how. At a temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, even at room temperature, some of the bonds are broken. So, for example, we see here that this bond is broken. So, when this bond is broken, this electron has become free. Means, this electron has come out from here and the position of the electron which has become vacant now or the I we call them as vacant sites, they are called as holes. So, a hole is nothing but a vacancy, a vacant site, we are calling it as hole. So, once a bond is broken, the electrons come out and correspondingly holes are also being generated. So, this is one phenomena which we are discussing about is the generation of electron hole pairs. They are always created in pairs. Whenever there is one electron, then there will be a hole. So, if you see it in the energy band diagram, when some of the bonds are broken, a few electrons go into the conduction band. So, here you can see uh, these are the electrons which are there in the conduction band. Where from these electrons have come? They have come from the valence band. Means those electrons which are present in the outermost orbit on gaining the energy, they become free. So, when they are free means they are conducting electrons and they lie in the conduction band. All the energies of the conduction electrons are represented by this conduction band. Now, when we see what we try to understand here is in an intrinsic semiconductor, we have seen that the number of electrons is equal to the number of holes. So, here you see there are six electrons. So, correspondingly, there are one, two, three, four, five, six holes. So, they are equal. Now, coming to the energy gap. What is an energy gap? 
So in semiconductors, the forbidden energy or the energy gap is very small. So if I have to define the energy gap, it is the gap between the lowest level of the conduction band EC and the highest level of the valence band EV. This is what we call it as band gap or the energy gap. And for semiconductors, the band gap is very small when compared to insulators. If you see in conductors, they are overlapping. But here we are restricting our discussion to semiconductors. So what is the band gap? It is small. And if you see for uh, germanium, it is around 0 0.7 electron volt. And for silicon, it is 1.1 electron volt. And whatever we have discussed before, at 0 Kelvin, there are no electrons in the conduction band and the valence band is completely filled. This is what we are showing here. The valence band is completely filled and the conduction band is empty. This is at 0 Kelvin. Now, as the temperature increases, some of the electrons are excited. They move into the conduction band. So, this is the conduction band. This is partially filled. Means some of the electrons from the valence band have moved into the conduction band. So, as the temperature increases, electrons from the valence band move to the conduction band. And their resistivity varies between 10 power minus 14 to 10 power 7. Now, when we are talking about this conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor, it is behaving as an insulator at 0 Kelvin. And as the temperature increases, some of the bonds are broken and the electrons become free. They start conducting. So, the conductivity increases. Now, uh, we are seeing another method by which the conductivity of a semiconductor can be increased. That is by doping. So, the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor can be increased by adding small amounts of impurity. So, the impurity can be from third group or fifth group. So, the third group we are calling it as trivalent impurity and the fifth group we are calling it as pentavalent impurity. So, whenever we are adding an impurity, what happens is the conductivity is increased. In case of silicon, it is increased by 1000 times on adding 10 parts of boron per million parts of silicon. If you take 1 million part of silicon and you just add 10 parts of boron to it, so its conductivity increases by 1000 times. So this process of adding an impurity to a semiconductor, we call it as doping. And the impurity that is added, either the trivalent or the pentavalent impurity, we call it as dopant. Now, in an n-type semiconductor, when a pentavalent impurity is added, which consists of five valence electrons, then what happens? The concentration of electrons increases. So, we are taking a semiconductor uh, material with four valence electrons and to that we are adding a pentavalent impurity, which has five valence electrons. And so, four of the electrons from this pentavalent impurity form covalent bonds with silicon or germanium atoms and one electron is always free. So, more the number of dopants, then more the number of free electrons. So, the concentration of electrons increases and this we call it as n-type semiconductor. So, this is how we see. We have taken a silicon crystal and we have added a phosphorus which is a pentavalent impurity which has five valence electrons. So, this is the fifth electron. So, four are forming bonds and this is always free. So, more the number of phosphorus atoms we add, more the number of free electrons. And all these free electrons will occupy a level and this is ED. This is what we call as donor energy level. All the these electrons which have come from the donor atoms are in this level which we denoted by ED. And it is slightly below the conduction band. Now, in a p-type semiconductor, it is formed by doping with trivalent impurity. So, trivalent impurity is an impurity from the third group like gallium or indium. So, whenever we are adding a trivalent impurity which has only three valence electrons and 
it is added to a pure semiconductor with four valence electron there is always a deficiency of electron or a vacant site which we are calling it as hole and in a p type semiconductor holes are the majority and electrons will be the minority this is one important point we need to understand or remember whenever we are taking a p type semiconductor the majority carriers will be holes and whenever we take an n type semiconductor the majority carriers will be electrons so if you see here when we are adding boron which is having only three electrons there is always a vacant site this silicon cannot form a covalent bond because there is a deficiency of electron here and this deficiency of electron we are calling it as hole so the energies of all these deficiencies or the holes are denoted by an acceptor level which we call it as ea and it lies just above the valence band now we are going to talk about ek diagrams no to understand about an a direct and indirect band gap first we need to understand what is a semiconductor and in that what are intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor that is pure and impure semiconductor and how are the electrons and holes and the formation of electron hole pair or electron hole pair generations we have seen now we are going to discuss the ek diagram that is energy versus k vector diagram we call and this shows the characteristics of any given semiconductor material so it shows the relationship between energy and momentum of the available quantum mechanical states for electrons in a material now you see here uh, we have taken energy along the y axis this is the y axis and we have taken momentum along the x axis so when i say momentum momentum is denoted by p p is equal to h cross k and h cross is a constant which is h by 2 pi h cross is h by 2 pi which is a constant so the momentum vector can also be represented by the k vector so we have taken momentum along the x axis and the energy along the y axis so uh, in general whenever we are denoting the energy levels Uh, till now in the diagrams we have seen all the energies occupied by the valence electrons are in the valence band and this is the topmost level in the valence band and the energies of the electrons in the conduction band are denoted by this band and ec is the lowest level in the conduction band and the gap between the two we have called it as eg which is the energy gap now actually when we are drawing we are drawing it as a straight line okay the energy versus okay but now when we have to represent it on an ek diagram actually when you see the lines are not straight lines there is a difference in the energy levels of the valence band and the conduction band so that is what we will understand now so the band gap represents the minimum energy difference between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band but the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are not generally at the same value this is what we want to understand now now if i take the conduction band so i can say this is the bottom most point in the conduction band and the valence band if i see here so this is the top most point in the valence band they are not straight there are ups and downs they, the energies are differing so this is the lowest low point in the conduction band lowest energy level and this is the highest energy level in the valence band and the difference we are calling it as band gap okay now it is not required that always the momentum vector of these two will match okay 
So how it is going to be is, if the k vectors are the same for conduction band minima and valence band maxima, then we call it as direct band gap semiconductor. If you see here in the diagram, this is the lowest point in the conduction band and this is the highest point in the valence band and they are occurring at the same value. So whenever these two are matching with each other, you call it as direct band gap. And in direct band gap, they are occurring at the same value of momentum. So we have seen that either the k vector or the momentum vector we call. So these are occurring at the same value of k. I am denoting this x-axis along is k and along the y-axis we have denoted e. So where is it occurring? It is occurring the lowest and the highest point they are occurring at the same value of momentum or the k vector. Now this band gap is called direct means if the momentum of the electrons and holes is the same means momentum of electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band then what happens this electron when it jumps from here to here it can directly emit a photon. So are you able to understand now we call it as recombination. So because these two are happening at the same value of momentum so, an electron, when it jumps from the conduction band to the valence band, it can directly emit a photon. So, in case of direct uh, semiconductor, direct band semiconductor, electron in the conduction band recombines directly with the hole in the valence band without any change in momentum as well as kinetic energy. Why there is no change in momentum? Because they are at the same level. There is no need to change the momentum. So energy can be emitted in the form of light and whenever we call it as photon, photon is nothing but a packet of energy which we call it as photon, okay. So this is what we call it as spontaneous emission. What is spontaneous emission on its own without supply of external energy. So whenever an, uh, an electron from the conduction band jumps into the valence band, it fills the hole and there will be recombination and the difference in energy is being emitted as a photon and this process we are calling it as spontaneous emission. And also what we see here in uh, direct band gap semiconductor energy is conserved by means of emitting a photon and these transitions we call them as radiative transitions. So the, tra the transition is a radiative one and the carrier lifetime is small in case of direct band gap semiconductor and the best example for direct band gap semiconductors are gallium arsenide, indium arsenide, zinc oxide, cadmium selenium and zinc sulfide and the light that is emitted in spontaneous emission that wavelengths that they occur in the infrared region. So when you see the spectrum they lie in the infrared region of the spectrum. Now coming to indirect band gap. We have discussed about direct band gap. Now coming to the indirect band gap. So in an indirect band gap, the maximum energy of the valence band occurs at a different level of momentum to the minimum in the conduction band energy. So now let us see this in the diagram. We, have, we are taking again the same momentum along the x-axis and energy along the y-axis. Now, we, this is the line we are getting for the valence band and this is the topmost level in the valence band. I will call it as Ev and this is the momentum value at which we are getting the maximum Ev. No? The maximum value where we are getting the momentum. Okay. Now, coming to the lowest level in the conduction band. So, this is the lowest level. This I will call it as Ec. So, if you see the momentum at which it occurs is this. So, for Ev, this is the momentum and for Ec, this is the momentum. Ec is the lowest level in the conduction band. 
EV is the highest level in the valence band. So they are occurring at a different momentum values. They are not occurring at the same value like in a direct band gap. So they are occurring at different values. So now if the K vectors are different for conduction band minima and valence band maxima, then you call it as indirect band gap. Now you see the band gap is different. This is here and this is here. There is a gap in between the two momentums. So in this case, momentum is not the same. So what happens here is a photon cannot be emitted directly because the electron has to pass through an intermediate state and transfer of momentum to the crystal lattice. So there we have seen there is conservation of energy. But here in this case, the electron from the conduction band cannot directly come into the valence band because there is a change in momentum vectors. So what has to happen here is the electron has to go through an intermediate phase of change of momentum. Only then there will be a, a transfer of electron into the valence band. So in case of indirect band gap semiconductors, during excitation, there is a change in momentum and the kinetic energy as well as the direction and path of the electron. So that is why we say that the energy is not conserved in indirect band gap semiconductor. And in indirect band gap semiconductor, energy is emitted in the form of heat. There we have seen it is emitted in the form of a light, mostly photons, we talk in terms of spontaneous emission. But here, the energy is emitted in the form of heat and the carrier lifetime is also high. It is greater than the carrier lifetime of a direct band gap semiconductors. And the best examples of indirect band gap semiconductors are silicon, germanium and carbon or the compound we call it as diamond also. Now you understand here, whenever we are talking about indirect band gap semiconductors, they are pure semiconductors. What are pure semiconductors? Example, silicon and germanium. Pure, silico, pure semiconductors means intrinsic semiconductors. So in intrinsic semiconductors, we have indirect band gap. In indirect band gap, the emission cannot happen directly. There should be a change in momentum. But whereas in direct band gap, we, were, we are taking a compound that is compound semiconductors or extrinsic semiconductor where there is a dopant. Because of that, the gap is becoming direct. Now we are going to understand. We will see both the diagrams together. So this is what we have seen in direct. The lowest level and the highest level, they are occurring at the same value of momentum. But whereas if you see in an uh, impure, uh, this is a pure semiconductor, the level, the highest level and the lowest level, there is a change in momentum. So this has to undergo an intermediate phase of change of momentum and only then there will be a transition. So the large change in momentum is required for recombination of electron and pole. So the difference between these two play a very important role in optical devices. Why we are discussing about indirect and direct band gap is this plays a very important role in optical devices. So a photon can provide energy to produce an electron hole pair and each photon has an energy equal to E where E is equal to H nu or this can be written as H C by lambda. So E is equal to. So we can also write H by lambda as E by C is equal to H by lambda which is nothing but P. The famous de Broglie equation we have seen. So we can write E by C is equal to P where C is the velocity of light. So an optical photon has an energy of the order of 10 power minus 19 joules because C is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. So there is a that is a typical photon which has a very small amount of momentum. Now, when we are talking about a photon of energy Eg, what is Eg here? It is the band gap energy, the difference between the 
two levels EC and EV. Only then it can produce an electron hole pair. Okay. So that is in a direct band gap semiconductor, the transition is very easy because the electron in the conduction band and the hole, they are at the same momentum values. So they have, because the electron does not need to give very much momentum, they are at the same momentum level. Okay. However, an electron must also undergo a significant change in its momentum for a photon to of energy eg to produce an electron hole pair in indirect band gap this is the main difference we are trying to understand so in direct band gap there is no need for change in momentum whereas in indirect band gap there is a requirement for the change in momentum indirect band gap we are seeing in intrinsic semiconductor that is a pure semiconductor and direct band gap we are seeing in extrinsic semiconductor, which is pure. So I think one of the questions for the students will be answered here itself. Whenever we are having an intrinsic semiconductor, that's a pure semiconductor. Why should we make it impure by adding an impurity? So by adding an impurity, what we are doing here is we are trying to increase its conductivity. And also one more advantage is the band gap is becoming direct. So whenever the band gap becomes direct, there is no need for change in momentum and there is a transition that happens and the recombination of electron hole pairs happens, which gives rise to energy. That is here it is emitted in the form of photon. No? So what we are have, trying in indirect, it is what there is a problem that there should be a change in momentum. And only also what happens is, it requires an electron to interact not only with the photon to gain energy, but also with the lattice vibration called phonon in order to either gain or lose the momentum. Because the momentums are not matching, it has to somehow do something to match with the momentum. So for that, it has to either change its momentum or exchange the energy with the lattice, which we call it as phonon vibration. So, the indirect process proceeds at a much slower rate as it requires three entities to intersect in order to produce an electron. That is an electron, a photon and a phonon. This is what is required in an indirect process. And this is analogous to many chemical reactions wherein a particular reaction step, a reaction between two molecules will proceed at a much higher rate than a process which involves three molecules. So whenever it involves three molecules, the rate becomes less, the rate of combination or reaction. The same way here also in indirect band gap, it has to proceed through three phases. So first a phonon for the electron to recombine, there should be a phonon and then a photon is emitted. So the same principle also applies to the recombination of electrons and holes to produce photons. And the recombination process is much more efficient in a direct band gap semiconductor. So that is very efficient now when compared to indirect band gap. Now what we have is in indirect band gap like silicon, Electron from the conduction band cannot fall into the valence band, but must undergo a momentum change and also a change in its energy. That is why we say energy is not conserved. But in indirect transition, which involves a change in energy, okay, that is generally given up as heat and is emitted as a photon. Now, finally, we are going to understand all the points that we have discussed till now to understand very clearly about a direct band gap semiconductor and an indirect band gap. We are quickly going to summarize all the points that we have seen. So, direct band gap semiconductors, they are impure or extrinsic or compound. Impure means all the atoms in the crystal are not of the same. We are going to add an impurity. So when we are adding an impurity, we are calling it as extrinsic and it becomes a compound semiconductor. Like the examples we have seen, indium phosphide, gallium arsenide, 
gallium arsenic phosphide. All these are compound semiconductors which are extrinsic, they are impure. Now when we are talking about indirect band gap, in indirect band gap they are pure or intrinsic semiconductors and they are elemental semiconductors. Elemental and compound. Compound means where an impurity is added. Elemental means all atoms are the same. Whether I am taking germanium or silicon, all the atoms in the crystal are either germanium or silicon. Okay. So, indirect band gap means pure. Pure means in intrinsic and it is they are only elemental semiconductors. Now coming to the EK curve, comparing the EK curve for direct and indirect band gap. Now we are taking K vector along the X axis and energy vector along the Y axis and showing the energy levels. The lowest level of the conduction band and the highest level of the valence band. Now, the lowest point and the highest point of these valence band, they are occurring at the same value of momentum vector. So, we call it as direct band gap. So, this is the direct band gap energy. This is the lowest point. This is the highest point. So, this is the direct band gap energy. So, whenever an electron from here jumps into the valence band, the difference in energy is being emitted as photon. And the energy of the photon is given by E g is equal to H nu. Now when it comes to the indirect band gap, this is the lowest level. Again, we are taking the talking about the EK diagram here for indirect E versus K. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Now this is the highest level in the valence band, E b. And this is the lowest level in the conduction band EC. Now, this is the momentum value for this and this is the momentum. They are not occurring at the same value. There is a difference in momentum. Unless the electron undergoes a change in momentum, it cannot directly emit the energy. And energy is not conserved. That is what we have understood in this EK diagram. Now, in a direct band gap semiconductor, the minimum energy of the conduction band and the maximum energy of the valence band have the same value of wave vector K1 is equal to K2. Means, if you go back and say, if I say this is K1 and for conduction band it is K2. So, K1 and K2 are matching with each other. K1 is equal to K2. But in this case, if I say this is K1 and this is K2, K1 is not equal to K2. So here in indirect, K1 is not equal to K2. And when K1 is equal to K2, what we are observing here is an electron from the conduction band can recombine with the hole in the valence band directly by emitting light photons. Light of photon energy H nu. And in indirect, Electron from the conduction band cannot recombine directly because they are not having the same value of K. So, it can recombine through traps by emitting light without emission of photon or light. Generally, we have seen it is emitted in the form of heat. Now, we are going to discuss the applications also. They are used to fabricate LEDs that is light emitting diodes, laser diodes, etc. Indirect band gap semiconductors, they are used to amplify the signals in electronic devices like rectifiers, transistors, amplifiers. Okay. And coming to the lifetime, that is lifetime here means the recombination rate. Recombination of electrons with holes is less. Because it's a direct band gap, it will take le very less time for recombination. And here the lifetime of the or the recombination rate is very high. And the emission of light is given by Eg is equal to H nu or Hc by lambda, which is measured in electron volt usually. One electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules. It's very small, but the emission of light is depending upon the energy gap. And here there is no emission of light. 
it is emitted only in the form of heat or it conducts electricity. So, for further uh, clarifications regarding any uh, terms or any concept, you can refer to these books, Dr. K. Vijay Kumar and Chandralingam Modern Engineering Physics or you can refer to textbook of engineering physics by Avadhan, Dr. Avadhanlu and uh, Dr. Shir Sagar. Or also you can refer to engineering physics by P.K. Pandey and S. Chetuvedi. Thank you and see you again. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.